Welcome to Beauty and the Ghee, the podcast about jujitsu and life from the female perspective. I'm Jen Eads. I'm a white belt full of curiosity and questions about all things jujitsu. And I'm AJ Klingerman, a Brazilian jujitsu purple belt, and I run the Role Model Women's Only Grappling Camp. Funny you mentioned that, AJ, because we are introducing, is this the first guest yeah, that we are releasing? I think, I think this is the first one we're releasing. So Because we don't even know for sure. We just make this stuff up as we go <laughs> along. Make it up as we go. Yeah. Yeah, so I think this is it. It'll be exciting. I'm so excited. I don't want to give too much away. I just want her to introduce herself. Should we just go going. right into it then? I think so. Let's get to okay. it. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Because the very first question everyone wants to know is... Who are you? I am Hillary Van Ornum out of Portland, Oregon, and I own and run Unicorn Jiu-Jitsu. Nice, nice. So I'll tell you the first time I uh, really heard of you was a couple of years ago at the Origin Camp. Uh, Lisa Bennett was like, you have to get to know Hillary. She's like, she's amazing. She was at one of the Black Belt and Butterfly events that you were at. And just loved you, said you were fantastic. And I was like, okay, I need to know who this lady is. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so then uh, we came out to Portland, I guess last year. It's been about a year. And, yeah. 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 And um, we knew we wanted to train with you one day and we were going to, uh, we talked about going and training somewhere else. And then we loved you so much. We ended up going and training with you two days. <laughs> so, and since then you opened your own school, right? Correct. Awesome. How's that going? It's going. Um, it's a little bit slow and it's extremely nerve wracking to yes. start on your own. It's just me and my husband and my brother who ki took coaches kickboxing. Nice. Um, we're still under Impact Jiu Jitsu, who is who I've come up with since my purple belt. Um, but we're pretty like we're on our own and it's it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. And we're starting a kids <laughs> program next week, which is also absolutely terrifying. Yes. Children are all terrifying. <laughs> I can agree with that. Um, and then did I see that your brother got his blue belt? He did after about 10 or 11 years of being a white belt. Nice. Yeah. He wanted to be nice. white belt for life, but um, he's clearly not a white belt. He just hasn't trained super consistently. Right. Right. I understand that. Um, I was a white belt for 13 years, yeah. so I totally get that. But again, same thing, like not super consistent. So and can you tell us a little bit about why you call it unicorn jujitsu? Yeah. So I think when I got my black belt, um, that first year, I somehow just started talking about being a unicorn and my brother drew this logo of my, it's a like pink and purple unicorn. And we talked about why. And I think that being a big, strong female, but also being feminine is kind of like being a unicorn. Um, I'm a super heavyweight. I will always be super heavyweight. I'm 5'10", and I'm built kind of like a truck. Um, <laughs> and I think you know people think of women being big and big and strong and like, oh, you got to be butch or like not very feminine. But like, I like to dye my hair pink and purple. I like to get my nails done. Um, so we started kind of that. And then I got sponsored by Show Your Roll and they started calling me the unicorn. That's awesome. So that's how that all started. And we actually were worried about calling the gym unicorn jujitsu about maybe scaring away men. But we, we met with a marketing firm and it was through one of my old students uh, through her work. And the guy that we met with was like, you know, anybody who doesn't want to come train at a place called unicorn is the kind of people you don't want. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, the bros or the, you know, like I, I won't talk to a woman or anything like that. And then he also talked about how a unicorn is male. They have a phallic weapon on their head and are <laughs> typically surrounded by like women. So what's bad about being a unicorn if you're a dude? Right. I, yeah. <laughs> um, and my brother drew the logo. Um, we went through a few iterations of it and we made it kind of a fierce, strong unicorn that a, a man doesn't feel weird wearing. And we're yeah. also going to design maybe some kids ones that are more cute. Uh, but yeah. So nice. And I, I have both your patch from your school and then more fierce one. And I have the pink and purple mm -hmm. one. I have the pink and purple one already on my gi. So awesome. I like it a lot. <laughs> um, so tell us about how you got started in jujitsu. It was actually my brother. 
Yeah. My brother for Christmas, we were living in DC um, around 2005. Our whole family was out there. We're kind of, we moved around a lot as kids. Um, but we went to high school in Portland, Oregon, but we all moved to DC and my parents, my brother, my husband and I, um, and he had just graduated from college, wanted to get back into train. He had trained martial arts his whole life. He's done various, I can't even tell you what they're called because I don't know, but <laughs> various different martial arts his whole life. And he wanted to train again. And we looked at gyms and we found this gym that had this program called Combat Defense Systems. And it was in Herndon, Virginia. It's actually where Pedro Sauer is based out of now. Um, okay. He wasn't there at the time, but they did a different martial art every day. One day it was a uh, Koshikon karate. One day it was jujitsu. One day it was judo, Krav Maga, Valley Tudo. And we wore geese. We wore these black Atama geese. And at first I liked kickboxing best. And then I liked judo. And then at the end of a the year, they, they, um, well, so how we, how we started was my brother wanted to do that. I went and I was going to buy him a three month membership for Christmas. And when we went in there, I kind of looked around and I had been an athlete my whole life, but I hadn't been doing anything in my 20s and looked around and was like, I think I want to try this too. So I signed us both up. Um, but we spent a year doing that. And then they cut that program and focused on Krav Maga. But we had this awesome judo coach, Maurice Allen, who's in Alexandria, Virginia. So we went and trained with him full time. And then we moved back here to Portland. And my brother was still in D.C., so I was nervous about training without my brother. He was, he's 6'5 right. and about 280, but he was my main training partner. So I spent two years trying to run marathons and half marathons in Portland, which I'm not really Yuck. built for running. <laughs> um, I'm built for carrying heavy things or something like that, but not running. Uh, but I did it. And you know, I did like two, two full marathons, probably about 10 half marathons. But then my brother finally That's moved awesome. back here. And I had found Team Quest. And I was like, Team Quest is where I want to go. It's where these UFC fighters. And we went there for four years. And then he kind of stopped training. But that's our like, that's my like story. And when people ask me how long I've trained for, it's really hard to answer because the first year was like this program of multiple things. Second right. year was judo. And then from when we came back here, I think I did more kickboxing and MMA than jujitsu for the first year or two. Yeah. Do you uh, hold rank in judo? I'm a brown belt in judo. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. And then you also do yoga as well, right? I do. I got started back in yoga. So I tore my ACL my first year at Worlds at Black Belt. And it was really hard recovering from that. I couldn't kneel. I couldn't get my butt to my heels mm -hmm. without a lot of pain. And I actually physically couldn't do it. So I started yoga about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. And then through that yoga, they had a yoga certification. And I was like, ooh, maybe teaching yoga could be really helpful for jujitsu. Yeah. Um, and so now at Unicorn, we do yoga for 30 minutes after every jujitsu class at night, except for Friday nights, because I figured people want to get out on Friday nights. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I really, we just started doing yoga at our school. We are do it on Sundays only right now at our Greenwood location. And I really enjoy it. It's definitely helpful. <laughs> I think it's helped a lot. And we have a couple of students that live about an hour away. They drive in from the gorge in Oregon. And mm -hmm. they said that doing the yoga right after jujitsu has helped tremendously because you do jujitsu and then you sit around or you sit in the car for an hour. Right. Yeah. That's really awesome. So you have people driving an hour to come train with you. Why do you think that is? Well, hopefully I'm doing something right. <laughs> um, well, yes. This couple has been with me. They would come and train with me uh, on Thursday nights at the place I was coaching before. And they would come and do private lessons with me on the weekend. And there's just not a lot of uh, jujitsu out where they live. And I don't know. They just, it's the guy is about my husband's size and the girl is about a middle heavy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think they, I, I guess I'm doing something right. But they're awesome. they're awesome too. Like they like to compete. I'm trying to get them to do Pan Ams next year for the first time. And very cool. And your husband's a brown belt, correct? Yes, you were there when he got his. I brown was there. Belt. Yeah, I was gonna say I was there when he got his brown belt. Yeah, which was awesome. And my husband started training after me, which it, it's we're kind of the a unique couple. I think I think most of yeah. the couples are the the man that's the higher belt than the woman. But when I was training at Team Quest, Brian was at home making beer. He was we had a <laughs> nano brewery at the house. Um, and he was making beer and trying beer. 
And then when I switched to impact, he really felt like, okay, maybe, maybe I'll give it a try this time. And he has been phenomenal. He's won master's worlds at blue and purple belt. That's awesome. And he just had, he's recovering from LCL surgery. So his goal is to win it at Brown belt next year. And uh, yeah, he's, he's become pretty awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Was there ever any uh, weirdness between like you guys or, you know, other people, like anybody harassing him or anything like that for being lower no, rank than his wife? But when we go and coach people, um, when I'm mm-hmm. coaching someone and he's standing next to me, 98% of the time, the opponent goes and shakes Brian's hand instead of mine. Dang. Mm-hmm. So never like your people, but like when it's the other, mm-hmm. they the other just assume. Teammate. Yeah. They just yeah. assume. Wow. Yeah. It's very And then he's very quick to say, well, she's, she's a black belt. Or if we're yeah. at a tournament, say Pan Ams or Worlds or Masters Worlds, and they see him wearing a jiu-jitsu t-shirt, they go, oh, hey, are you competing? And he's like, yeah, but she's a black belt. It's just yeah. funny. So, I mean, like, you know, for me, I'm I'm kind of in the more traditional where James mm-hmm. kind of got me into jujitsu more. But for the most part, I compete a lot more than he does. And we went into the Chicago, well, he went into the Chicago Open and I was there. I didn't compete. And everybody would be like, you're competing, right, AJ? And I'm like, no, not this time. And then James would say he was and they'd be like, really? Like, <laughs> 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 they're so used to, you know, kind of being the other way where I would compete constantly. And he just had a couple of year that he did. So uh, it's been been interesting that that's kind of reversed this year. So you also run a women's only grappling camp, correct? I just started one this year. Yes, you just did your first one. How did it go? It went awesome. Um, That's really cool. We weren't sure what to expect. We also weren't sure how many people we could fit on our mat safely. Our mats aren't that big, our space. We wanted to start small so we could afford it and then hopefully outgrow it. Yeah. Yeah. And we had on Saturday, we had over 40 women on the mat, which for me was great. Um, we brought in Rhonda Andrews is one of my best friends from jujitsu. We met at purple belt and we competed once and that was it. And, <laughs> and she's out of Vegas. She's right? in Vegas. She owns uh, yeah. her own Gracie Humaita in Las Vegas. Um, and we always make a point to come and see each other and, and she'll come up for a week and I'll go down there for a week just to train with each other. Um, awesome. And then I, the other girl I brought was Marisha Malje. I, I always butcher her name. Malje Siak. She's going to okay. correct me. Um, <laughs> but Marisha and I also met at Purple Belt, but we were not friends at first. And I actually used her as fuel uh, after she beat me first year at Purple Belt. That's awesome. And yes, but we have become good friends and I absolutely adore her. Um, she's from Poland, but she lives in Washington, D.C. And she's actually, I think, number six right now for Black Belt women in the nice. rankings. Yeah. But one of my goals with that camp, too, it was a three-day camp. Um I wanted to show the girls that you can compete with people and become really good friends with them. And it's, yes, it's not weird. Um, right. We ended up having several women come down from Washington, a couple from California, one from Texas, and then one of Marisha's students from DC came and it was great. But the, on Sunday, we, we pretty much did, we reviewed everything and then we got them into groups of similar size and belt, which there were. It was insane. There was like a whole group of five or six blue belt, heavyweight, tall, like lanky yeah. girls. And it was, yeah. and they were like, oh my God, there are <laughs> others like me. And it was awesome. And I think they've kind of developed their own friendships from the camp. And I know that's what you guys do too, which is so yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. I had a girl come up to me at our tournament recently and she was like, you know, of everything I got from your camp, the best thing is I got so many friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was like, I just, everywhere I go now in jujitsu, there's friends from camp. So it's really, it's really cool. That's my favorite part is the community of it for sure. Well, and I hope that these girls get together and train together. Like, Oh, Hey, I'm yeah. visiting this place and you're there. Hey, can I come train? And we yeah, travel a sure. lot. And that's something that we've really enjoyed. We've, we've actually gone to Europe the past two years, not this year, but doing Globetrotters camps too. And we've even, we're getting a network of friends in Europe that when we go back, we can, or we can go back and go train with people and hopefully set up seminars and yeah, meeting people is awesome. I think it's one of the best parts about jujitsu. Yeah. So do you find yourself when you're at a camp like Globetrotters, 
Um, do you find yourself like taking notes like, oh, we could do this or, oh, we definitely oh, should do this. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> that's me. Definitely. That's, that's absolutely me. I just got back from origin camp, uh, pretty recently and the, all of origin camp. I'm like texting my best friend, like, okay, so I like that they do this. What do you think about this? I'm not sure how I feel, you know, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> the whole time I'm planning our camp. So <laughs> well, and I taught at the Jose Heishi camp this July. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah, I saw that. That was also, okay, so here's what they do. And I took some notes. And then I also send out a survey after our camp to everyone yeah. asking for feedback. And I think the worst comment we got was the t-shirts didn't fit very well. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> that can be definitely a thing. Like, I didn't really like the cut of that yeah. shirt. <laughs> I, I think that was the most critical feedback we got. Or can we make lunch 90 minutes instead of 60? Yeah, I was like, the only the only negative feedback I got from your camp was I'd really like a snack break. Yes. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> So, and now um, I'm like, was that from Akila? You know it was. <laughs> <laughs> Akila was like, I'd really have liked snacks. That'd be nice. <laughs> like just a break for to eat a little something. Um, but yeah, so we we haven't mentioned that yet, but one of uh our former blue belts is now one of your blue belts. Well, so, two cool. if you count Michael. Oh yeah, Michael too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll count her husband too. <laughs> and yeah, they they've been super awesome. It's it's really funny to see like they like to drill things on both sides. And I mm-hmm. yeah, and I'm always like, what are you guys doing over here? And I have to break them up. But having her come to camp too, um, I think she she helped some because she's a super heavyweight also. And yeah, and there were there were a lot of bigger girls at camp. And I think they were all like, I'm not alone. You know, it right? was awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. That's awesome. I love them. They are so great. Like we were so sad when they left. I still talk about how sad I am on a regular basis and they've been gone like a year and a half, <laughs> maybe two years. I think they've I been, know, gone it's been way too long, long. but anyway, know. you know, they're awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that they they're with you. Cause I know it took them a while to get back into jujitsu. And you know, it's one of those things where you had your home and you had your people. And so finding a new home is really hard. And, um, I tried to get them to come with us when we were out there, um, just to, you know, kind of test you guys out and see, and I just, they just weren't ready. They were so nervous about getting started. And then finally they made it to you and they, they love you guys. So it's been good. It's it has been great. And I think that's something else we've been doing is I, I keep saying we're kind of becoming the home for the misfits or the misfit toys. <laughs> we have yeah. a lot, we have only a couple brand new students to jujitsu. When we started, I had this whole curriculum for how to start beginners. And they've almost all been people from other gyms or that have moved here, had kids, taken a break, haven't trained for a while, or that have lived here and had kids and had a break. And it's just right. been funny, or they just didn't fit in at the gym that they were at before. And or yeah, a, that's a-, a gym hit like one girl has just come because her gym cut the jujitsu program. It's crazy. So <laughs> it's I thought we were gonna have to teach from square one, but now we're having to go back and break some bad habits or go, oh, that's really good that you're doing that. Where'd you yeah. where'd you start that? And it's typically Michael and Akila. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, I um I always tell people, you know, like there's two schools of thought. There's like get the move down on one side get it good. And then you can try it on the other. And then there's a school of thought of like practice even on both sides. And then I joke that I'm a Libra and I like all things in balance. (laughs) So we like to practice everything on both sides. Um, but so that's interesting, like that, that that's, they, they're still doing that. So that's good. (laughs) Well, and I think that one, one of my teaching philosophies, and maybe this will help for you guys too, is just because this works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Yeah. And this is my way, not the way. And if they, it works better for them to learn it on both sides, go for it. I yeah. need to learn it good on one side and then maybe work the other side. Right. Yeah. Today um, I was actually teaching like cross jokes from Mount and I hate a five finger cross joke. And I was like, I'm not good at it. My wrists don't want to do it. It sucks. But then everyone in the class got it better than the other two cross jokes. And I was like, see, that's why we teach things we're not good at. Yes. <laughs> like, just because I don't like it doesn't mean it won't work. <laughs> and I was there and I will say that was very good. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So what would you say is one of your favorite memories of jujitsu? Or maybe one of your favorite things that's come out of it that you didn't expect, something like that. That's hard to nail down one. Um, I think overall, just the, the friendships uh, yeah. is my favorite thing. Like having, like Rhonda and I talk about everything, life. 
Um, yeah. There's a few other girls that are like that. There's a girl in San Diego, Amy Parzinski, who's a brown belt that has, is just one of my best friends. And, and we, we, all girls we, I've competed against. Amanda Hodson's another one, another brown belt in California, and then Marisha. And it's just having, I don't know, I have friends all over that those are my girls. And I wish we all yeah. lived together. Um, That's awesome. But then another, I was, because I was, I read some of the questions that people were thinking about having you guys ask. And yeah. <laughs> one of my, my other like favorite memories recent was when I came back from my knee surgery, I did Master's Worlds and I got double silver. But yeah. I was so proud of myself for that. That's um, awesome. I think in the finals of the open weight class, I was against Jenna Bishop and I was laughing because she was breaking <laughs> my grips in her closed guard. And I just thought it was hilarious. And she's so good. Yeah, um, she is. And I, I was just, I don't know. I was, I was just happy to be out there and my knee held up and I had girls jump guard on me and it was okay. And so that was, that's awesome. Yeah. That, that year was, and that year at Pan Am's, I also, I did masters at Pan Am's, but I, I won my division and they got silver in the open and lost to Jenna again. But um, <laughs> just compete, coming back and competing after that was, was really hard, but I did it. And yeah. Yeah, that's good. Get back into it. That's really good. So not to give away anything for camp, but is there anything that you really just absolutely love to teach? Bow and arrow. Ah, Bow and arrows or any kind of pressure passing. I like a smash pass uh, over under anything using the pressure. And I think that's another thing that especially bigger girls have a hard time with is, well, I don't want to be heavy. And right. I mean, when I yeah. first started and when I was in, just doing judo, I had a, a girl, she was a black belt and she was trying to get, make the Olympic team. So she's high level, but she was probably like 150. And I specifically remember her saying, don't squish me on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, what, what, what am I supposed to do? Just like let you do whatever you want. And this is judo. So they're, you know, we're pinning and we did right. a lot of groundwork, yeah. but it just, it, I still remember it and it hurt. And I don't ever want anybody to feel like that. Right. So yeah, don't, don't squish me. <laughs> I still get paranoid too. I'm like, I don't want to, you know, be too happy. Yeah. Well, and I, I still do that too. And I, and I, I'm trying to learn to, to practice what I preach, but it's hard. Right. It's hard. It's really hard for all women, at all sizes. I mean, really like mm -hmm. women don't want to be heavy. They don't right. want to be even told that they're heavy or, you know, um, I was doing privates with this lady and she was like 64, but she was in decent shape, you know? Um, but I mounted her at the lightest mount ever. And she was like, Oh my God, you're so heavy. And I was like, girl, you ain't seen nothing yet. I was like, you just wait a minute. Like <laughs> once we get into this a little further, I'll show you what actual pressure feels like. <laughs> Like I'm being nice now, <laughs> but that's something that I try and, you know, break the girls of like, it's okay to be heavy. It's okay to smash. Like you want that now, you know, and we don't want to, I, I want to mm -hmm. get women out of apologizing. Yes. And though I still do we it We don't too. sorry here. <laughs> yep. That's what I tell all my girls. We don't sorry here. <laughs> well, and it, that's really good. It's, I met, I, I, I've done some yoga, other yoga stuff. And there's this woman, Jessamine, I don't even know Jessamine's last name. She's a very, she's a bigger black woman who has been on the cover of Yoga Journal. And she came here and did a like two hour talk about just her experience in the yoga world and how, you know, being a woman of color and being of size was like a taboo and how hard it was. And in her yoga teacher training, she talked about they were doing like partner yoga and she kept apologizing to her partner and her partner was like, it's okay. Like you don't have to apologize. And she just, she said, you know, I, I just said, I'm, I guess I'm just sorry for existing. Aww. And I think that's a very common thing among women. Yeah. Us, you know, so I think that's something. And, and then I, I asked her a question about how did she handle that? Um, and I told her about jujitsu and how, you know, how do you, how would you teach someone to not apologize? And it was, it's like, she looked into my soul and she said, well, first you have to like, you have to own it and deal with your shit first. And then, right. and I was like, Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> so that's something I'm still working on and I'm trying to help other people with. Yeah. So one of my other best friends moved out to Portland and we've talked about her a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, you and I have, but she's uh, very proficient at saying sorry a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've started to try and get her to say thank you instead of I'm sorry. So, you know, like 
instead of I'm sorry, I'm late, you know, thank you for waiting on me. Thank you Mm -hmm. for your patience, you know, things of that nature. And we kind of turn it into a joke, but just, just to kind of help break her of that. So like, if she runs into me, she'll be like, Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm just like, you're welcome for getting to touch me. You know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but we're just trying to like break that because I do think that apologizing leads to a lot of anxiety as well. Like it makes, you know, you just have that feeling of you've done something wrong and yeah, so it's, it goes really deep. Yeah. Well, and self-talk is something I'm also still working on. I work a lot yeah. with um, James Foster, who's up in Seattle, but he's kind of become my mentor and big brother and he's he's won master's worlds the past two years in a row at black belt at ultra heavyweight awesome and he makes me do mental training and there's a bunch of books and i need to put this list together for my students but audio books to listen to and and changing your self-talk and you know he called me out on i my most recent competition was against gabby garcia and fight to win and it went horribly and he after the fact said that I said something in the locker room or the warm-up area before that he was not happy with. Mm. I had some indecision and some like, somebody asked me, well, what are you going to do to her? And I probably should have just not even answered it, but I hesitated and he was like worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. So self-talk. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So would you say that 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 self-talk or, you know, what would you consider like your biggest mental hurdle? Believing I belong out there with the, with the, the, the top black belt women. Yeah. That's been, um, yeah. I mean, be, going against Gabby has been something I've wanted to do since I was a blue belt. I was, yeah. I went to worlds at blue belt was what, like my second tournament ever. <laughs> worlds, <laughs> no big deal. Why not? <laughs> um, and I saw her and I was just like, oh my God, like, wow. And yeah. she won everything. And yeah, getting the call, like Seth called me and said, well, not called, te- emailed me, offered me it. And it was right as we were opening the gym. <laughs> it was like, yeah. And right after Brian had surgery. And I was like, this is terrible timing. But but I, I felt like I had to do it. When, when, yeah. when I get that opportunity again? Right. So, but afterwards I questioned, like, did I belong out there? My first tournament at Black Belt was Pan Am's. And I was terrified. My first match was Luis Montero. And I was like, oh my God, she's one of the best in the world. But my coach said, I've rolled against her and I've rolled against you. You're a harder role. And I went out there and I beat her by that's one awesome. advantage. Wow. So it's not like, hey, no, that's so, that's, <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome. So I think, yeah, I just believing I belong out there. It's, it's, yeah. I'm still working on that. And I've gone against some of the best in the world and, yeah, they've pretty much beaten me, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, but you, you're out there, you're putting it on the line, yeah. you're leading from the front. And I think what you do is more than just the competing, right? It's, it's really helping to build the, the women, especially, um, in the community and, you know, just jujitsu in general, like you've done a lot for the jujitsu community and that goes far beyond competition. Well, I'm trying to get more people out there competing too. And that's one reason. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm toying with still going back to adult. I'm master's three now I'm 41 and, um, right behind you, you know, I did, <laughs> I did do adult Pan Ams last year. I did not do worlds because I had the fight to win in the gym. Yeah. But I'm toying, like, we'll see where we're at, but I'm, I'm having given up hope on adults still just to show that we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Something I thought was really interesting. Uh, the master one female black belts, almost every division winner at master's worlds this year was also the division winners from the adult Mm -hmm. female black belts. (laughs) They're like, so those young girls are, (laughs) they, they better bring it (laughs) because the master's ladies are. So I think that's really cool. Is there something that you wish you would have known um, like when you started jujitsu, uh, or like something that you would tell your white belt self, maybe something to the effect of that black belt is possible. When I yeah. first started, I didn't, I think when I saw Gabby was the first time I also saw other female black belts. I didn't know they existed. I mean, I knew they existed, but I'd never seen one in person. Right. <laughs> right. And I think that also goes back to the unicorn thing is, you know, a female black belt, what used to be like being a unicorn, but also that at black belt, you're not going to know everything. I thought yeah. that, oh, you get your black belt and you're going to be 
amazing at every single thing and you'll know everything. <laughs> and I mean, I still don't understand lapel guard. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that out. And I'm still trying to, to find my own guard. I'm, I'm a, I've always been a passer. And yeah, I, I, th- I think one, one thing I tell my, my brand new students is it's going to take three months before you know it all what you're doing, before you have a clue. Right. You're going right. to feel like you, don't know, have a, like you don't know what's going on for three months at least. And yes. that's okay. Yeah. And I think I would have told my white belt self to try to compete. Cause I didn't yeah. compete. So I was a blue belt. I thought I needed a, to be I, more ready. I needed yeah, to know more. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but I also had the problem. I couldn't compete locally. The, there were only two other girls that were ever the same belt for a long time and they wouldn't come up and wait. So it was hard to compete. <laughs> right. Right. But I would have maybe tried to do more. Yeah. It is nice now that, you know, there are so many more women in jujitsu. It does. It definitely gives more opportunity more opportunities for the women to get to compete at all belt levels, you know, so it's good. Okay. So typically we offer, um, some sort of on the mat tip or off the mat tip. Well, technically both, but (laughs) (laughs) do you have any tips that you would like to share with the listeners? I think try yoga. I mean, that's my current thing. Um, you can even, I mean, there's the yoga for jujitsu or I don't, is that the name of it? I think it's yoga for BJJ, but yeah, you, you can download stuff. <laughs> you can, you can, you can <laughs> even just find a few postures or go to a couple yoga classes and there's all kinds of yoga. I don't think that vinyasa yoga is best for post jujitsu. Um, what I offer is a lot of like yin yoga, but it's not mm-hmm. full yin yoga. Cause I don't hold, we don't hold postures for five minutes. We hold them for like right. two to three, but find a few good postures. If you can get half pigeon down, And when you're there, this is my other tip, is to, if you're doing this post-training, what I tell, we we kind of chat during the yoga. It's kind of like the post-jujitsu cool down when everybody's sitting on the wall, but instead we're stretching. But when there's quiet times, I say, focus on some good things you did today. Don't focus on the bad parts of your roles, even if it's that you showed up on time and you tied your belt correctly. Or you hit that sweep you've been working on or whatever. Focus on something positive that you did today in those yoga postures. Yeah. I love that. Do you have maybe, you know, two or three postures that you would recommend people doing after practice? Half pigeon. Okay. Um, Sphinx pose, which is where you're on your belly and your elbows are underneath your shoulders and you're stacked and you're letting your lower back relax. In jujitsu, we're so crunched up. That's going to extend your hip flexors, let your lower back extend and relax. Okay. And what's really helped me is it's called different things, but it's either fixed firm is how I learned the name of it. But you bring your knees together and you're kneeling on them and you bring your feet out wide and you sit back as far as you can. And that really helped stretch like that got, that got my knee flexibility. Good. Nice. And then anything stretching your forearms and fingers. <laughs> We've been doing a lot That's of spider good. guard the past few weeks and our students are like, my hands hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, uh, at origin camp, there was a lot of spider guard work and I was like, oh my gosh, my fingertips hurt <laughs> so much. <laughs> yeah. I've heard complaints about the skin, which there's not mm-hmm. really any yoga you can do to fix the skin, <laughs> but we can work on those hands and forearms. Good. So that's, um, I would say on the mat tip, since we mm-hmm, do yoga mm-hmm. on the mats, do you have an off the mat tip? Mental training. That buy some of these audio books. The Arts of Mental Training um, is a great one. There's an audio book of it. Um, and then I just forgot the name of the book. Relentless. Is that? Okay. It's, I um, I'm going to have to look it up. The guy worked with Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade. He's a, he's more of an NBA coach, but okay. his mental training, do, do mental yeah. training, yeah. anything awesome. to, to help that part. And one thing that, that coach Foster talks about is it's the easiest thing to do, but it's the most neglected part of your training. Everybody does their conditioning, all their drills, the rolling, but nobody wants to spend the time on the mental training. And you can do that in the car. You can get an audio book and turn it on in the car. Yeah. Or turn it on while you're in the shower doing laundry, whatever, doing some yoga. (laughs) (laughs) 
I like it. I like it. It's kind of, you know, like listening to that kind of stuff is kind of a form of meditation. Yes. So absolutely. I like that a lot. And maybe find some mantras to repeat in meditation while doing yoga. Yeah. I like a good mantra. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Very good. Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I I'm so excited to have you at camp. Um, I've spilled the secret to a couple people that you're coming, Lisa, especially since she was the first one to tell me about you. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'll absolutely be at camp. So she's never been to our camp before and she's coming because she wants to see you. So I've got a couple girls like that. So excited to have you at camp for sure. Well, thank you so much. I'm super excited. Uh, 200 women, like that's insane. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and, and I am a huge fan of one of the other coaches. Um, she's like my girl crush. Nice. <laughs> I, and she knows I tell her. Um, and then one of the other ones I have become, we're becoming better friends and I really, really like her. And the other one I don't know. So good. That's fun. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. So <laughs> you'll get to know new people and, yeah. you know reconnect with others. So it's good. And thank you for keeping that a secret as yeah. you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cause the other instructors don't even know who's coming. Okay. So. <laughs> well, like I said, one of them, that. and you can probably guess one I'm a huge fan of and, and yeah. one we've, we've gotten to know each other this past year and I really, really like her and we, we chat on the side and the other I've definitely heard of and I know, but I just don't know her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll be great. I, I can't wait to have you out and um, yes. Good luck with the school. Thank and- you. Come we'll visit. I will for sure. I and for other will. people that want to get to know you better. Yes. Where until can they camp, find you? Yeah. Where can they find um, you on social media? I am just unicorn jujitsu on Instagram. Um, there is some other weird person that is trying to impersonate me and has a similar <gasps> name, but I don't know. It, it's weird. Um, and it's private. So I can't, anyway, I don't know who that person weird. is, but it's uh, okay. I, the picture I think is me at the Globetrotters camp with like a a unicorn inflatable. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you must be like pretty famous to have a fake Instagram. <laughs> no, not at, at this all. point. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so what is your profile picture currently? It's, so it's me. Know. I think it's me um, in the, inf- like holding an inflatable unicorn. Okay. So that's the real one. Yeah. Okay. And we will put a link okay. to that in the yes. show notes so that yes, people know they are getting the, the other one. The other one account. is private. The other profile is private. So. Okay. 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 Good. And then that's our helpful. gym is unicorn underscore PDX or unicorn jujitsu underscore PDX. All right. And PDX is Portland. P- okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, and our, All right. Our gym's website is just unicornjujitsu.com. And how do you feel about having guests come when they're out in Portland? We love it. We've had a few, like one of your students, Anne came out and visited for yeah, like almost yeah, a week. Yeah. yeah. She was just going to come in, I think one night and she just loved it. And she was there like every night. Well, That was, that was like the first awesome. week you opened. Yeah. There were, I think there was one class where it was her and one other girl and she was like, <laughs> awesome. Right. Um, and then we had a She's girl, great. we had a girl come and visit from North Carolina um, who I think she had she just heard about us and she came also like one of the first weeks we were open and one day she got a private lesson because nobody else showed up for Nogi, (laughs) but she loved it and she was awesome. Um, But yeah, we love visitors. Uh, Whenever a a higher belt comes and visits, I try to make them teach something. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm sure James would love to next time. Absolutely. It's hard to keep him from teaching. So (laughs) I would love to pick his brain. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you very much. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. You guys too. Thanks for listening. If you need to know more about Role Model Camp, which I'm sure after listening to this interview, you want to know all the things. AJ, where can they find all the things? Yeah, absolutely. So for one, you should contact me on Facebook if you have any questions. I'm just AJ Klingerman. So that's easy. Uh, That's Klingerman with a C if you didn't already know. Uh, We also have a group. It's a private group on Facebook just for campers, um, which is Role Model Women's Only Grappling Camp. You can request to be a part of that. But if you're looking to register, which I'm sure that you are, uh, it's on thefighthub.com. And camp is 2020, May 1st through the 3rd, 2020. And we will have a link to that in the show notes because that's what we do. Yeah. And if you are on the Book of Faces and want to stay in touch with the podcast and continue some of the conversations that we start over here, you can find us on Facebook now at Beauty and the Gee Gang. We've got our own Facebook group. 
Yeah. <laughs> you can also find us on Instagram. I'm hanging out there at Brassy Broad Jen. And I'm AJ Klingerman. And together we are Beauty and the Gee podcast. And in addition to registering for camp, we are also going to ask you to subscribe to this podcast if you have not done that already. And more importantly, share it with a friend. If you've got somebody that you think might want to go to camp, but they maybe they're on the fence, they don't know what it's going to be like, have them listen to this interview. And we also very soon will be releasing more interviews with some of the guest instructors. Yes, I'm super excited. And we will see you on on the the mat. mat.